why doesn't React come with dependency injection? Short answer, because it doesn't need it, and also it's not its responsibility. But how do you then, then isolate your components for testing? How do you achieve inversion of control for dependencies without having a dependency injection container? Let's have a look. You are now watching the third video of a series about doing test-driven development or TDD when you develop a React web app. I made this series and the app because I teach React trainings and I also teach TDD trainings and I needed some new examples. This video series will not teach you everything you need to know to develop the web app yourself but only show you some interesting aspects of doing test-driven development with React. If you want to learn more about the code, then look at the code and the commit history on GitHub, which I will link in the description of this video. So today I want to talk about dependencies, dependencies of your React component, components and how to achieve inversion of control for dependencies and also how you how to isolate your components for testing. The web app I'm talking about is a simple kitchen timer. It only has a few components, but I still want to isolate those components from their business logic so that I can test the view logic of the components in isolation. So here we have an application component called app and it renders a timer. And this timer and some other components show up as anonymous in the React DevTools here. The timer renders a configuration panel and the SVG graphics, which contains a background, the red slice and the foreground. And those three are React components again. Uh, the configuration, the slice and the foreground uh, need some uh, business logic and I want to isolate the components from this business logic. I want to inject the logic. I do not want to inject other components because I already use Enzyme as my library for testing and it already gives me enough isolation uh, between components for testing. So I tried two variants for injecting the dependencies of components. The first one is to inject the dependencies directly into the component via the props of the component. The second one is to create the component with a function and to pass the dependencies to this function. So in the first variant, I pass the dependencies directly to the components via the props of the component. So I will pass in some functions to the component that the component can call later. The dependencies of the component are functions in this case. I could also pass in objects, but I didn't need this for uh, this small application. Also, I do not want to pass in the uh, dependencies every time I use the component. So I assign some default values for the dependencies. In this case, the foreground component needs a dependency that's called circle segment inside the component. The real implementation, the default value for this dependency is called segment2. So segment2 is a function that contains the production code. And the foreground uses this function to calculate where to draw the small lines, the 10 minute lines. In the production code, I can use the component directly and I will only pass in real props. I will not pass in the dependencies because um, in the production code, I'm fine with the default values. And the foreground does not have any further props, so I do not pass in any props. I only rely on the default values. In the test, I can pass in a stopped function for the circle segment. So I created a circle segment that always returns one of two canned values. It returns one value when the parameter radius is one and another value when radius is not one because those are the two points that I want to test. And the test itself is a parameterized test 
that passes in different values for the mince parameter and then checks uh, whether um, the component used circle segment to calculate where to draw the line. Uh, the second variant I tried is to create the component using a create function. So in this case, the create function gets the dependencies and it also has some default values so that I don't have to pass all the dependencies in the production version. In this case, I create the slice component with a function called create slice. And the slice again needs a circle segment. And again, the default um, implementation is segment two. So in the production code, uh, both the slice and the foreground use the same circle segment function, which is segment two. The slice needs this function to calculate how big the red pie slice should be. And um, this function creates a component. In, th in this case, the component is a function component, so it's just a render function. This component gets one other property, the percentage left, uh, which determines the size of the segment to draw. And the test and the production code use this same component, the component returned by create slice. And here we also see why some components show up as anonymous in the dev tools because they are anonymous functions. I could refactor this function to give the component a name, but then the create function will become slightly more complicated and also it will break a pattern. So a function that returns an anonymous function, that's a pattern that I can recognize. A function that creates a named function and returns it somehow breaks this pattern and makes it harder to recognize. Anyway, um, now in the test, I can create the component differently. I can pass in a stopped function or in this case, a fake. And uh, then I can again check whether the slice component uses this stopped circle segment correctly. So to recap, I can pass in the dependencies directly to the component via the props, which is really, really easy and the code is simple, but it somehow seems less clean to me because when I do this, the component gets more responsibilities that it should have. It's not only responsible for, um, uh, for rendering the component, it's also responsible for knowing how to get the dependencies. On the other hand, when I use a function to create the component, I write a little bit more code, but it also separates the responsibilities really, really nicely. I might even think into combining the approach, like I could create the function that then passes the, um, the dependencies as props to the component. So how do you isolate your components during testing? How do you manage the dependencies of React components? Please tell me in the comments of this video so we can have a discussion. Or do you have any questions about doing TDD with React? Then also add a comment to this video and I will try to answer your question as best as I can. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel so you will not miss the next video where I will show you how to test drive a well-known algorithm, an algorithm where I still want to do TDD so that I don't miss any special cases. Also follow me on Twitter, I am dtancer there, and check out our training offers at devteams.at slash services slash training, uh, where you can find our React and TDD training.